here today with Ross McKenzie from the Lethbridge Research Station. Welcome today, Ross. Thanks. Okay, Ross, we're going to talk about uh, fertilizer management uh, with canola. Uh, so if a farmer is, is thinking about seeding canola on his farm, what are some of the things he needs to be thinking about heading into the uh, planting time? Well, really, first of all, he has to kind of think about what kind of soils does he have, what kind of nutrient deficiencies does he typically have. Uh, probably do some soil testing. I, I, I always strongly recommend that, even though a lot of farmers don't do that. Because that, I really look at that as the benchmark for your starting point. What do you have remaining from last year? And if you kind of look on our Western Canada uh, perspective, we know in southern Alberta, we actually had not bad moisture last year. But if you get up into central Alberta, probably 70% of uh, soils across uh, central Alberta last year were um, too dry in terms of optimi optimum yield. And so in areas where the yields were lower because of some level of drought, that odds are they're going to have you know, some additional uh, fertilizer remaining in the soil. So if you don't do that soil test, you're kind of making decisions blindly and, and it does, the you know, the, the concept of, uh, you know, dad always put on 30 pounds yep. of N, that really is yep. sort of, not, doesn't work. Well, in, in my opinion, you know, the, the, there's, you know, that's certainly a, a good starting point. What, what, what have I put on in the past and what's worked for me? And that's a great starting point. But by the same token, especially when you have unusual years, a particularly wet year where yields were higher, or a drier year where yields are lower, then you want to sell test and see what's left to help you modify. Because after a, after a wet year with uh, good yields, uh, you may have really drawn down your nutrient levels, so which makes you kind of think, well, I'm going to have to put on a little more next year because the removal was so high last year. So, so it's, it's a matter of kind of putting things into balance. Yeah, so is there a ratio, when we start to calculate how much fertilizer we are going to need for canola, is there a ratio of uh, that we should be looking at in terms of N need, that needs to be available for yield and things like that? Uh, well, rather than talk about ratios, I like to look at what's, what's in the soil, um, what, what are you kind of looking at in terms of your yield potential, and then how much more nitrogen would you have to put on to achieve that yield potential. That's, that's the simplistic way of looking at it. So say for example, we'll just use irrigation where yields are optimum. I like to think that uh, whatever the farmer has in the soil and what he puts on in a way of fertilizer should probably add up to somewhere around 180 to 200 pounds of nitrogen to achieve optimum yield. Yet for a, a dryland farmer in the Lethbridge area on the same soil type, he would probably be modifying his fertilizer for example, if he's got a foot of moist soil or a couple inches of stored soil moisture, probably put on about 60 pounds of nitrogen. There's a soil plus what you put on the way of fertilizer set out to about 60 pounds. If you've got two feet of moist soil, probably not put on about uh, 70 pounds of nitrogen. That's soil plus fertilizer added up to come to around 70 to 75 pounds. And then if you have great moisture, three feet of moist soil. Like the then, Red River Valley this year. Yeah, so if you've got great moisture, uh, in southern Alberta, then I would say you probably want to be targeting around 90 pounds. But then that's in this particular area. So you, you have to really look, what, are the, what is the area that you're in? What is your yield potential? How much fertilizer do you have or how much nutrient do you have remaining in the soil? And then how much more should you put on? And that's kind of a simplistic, a simplistic way of looking at it. But uh, in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, there's been a lot of work over the years to develop fertilizer response curves. And so what you would preferably do or what I suggest is Look at the fertilizer response curves at different moisture levels for that your specific soil type. Are you on a brown, dark brown, black soil? What is the what is the typical response for what you have in your soil, and then after how much fertilizer you put on? And then you can even do some economics. How much is economic? Right this year, fertilizer prices are around 45 cents a pound for 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 nitrogen in the urea form, much less than they were a year and a half ago. So then economically you can put on more fertilizer as well. And also look at the value of canola. Like is it going to be $7 a bushel or right now it's kind of projected to be $9 a bushel. So the lower the fertilizer cost and the higher the value of canola you're growing, then you can put on more fertilizer. So you know, I like to look at not just uh, a kind of a simplistic way of looking at how much fertilizer do I need, but also tying some economics into it as well. So from a response standpoint, uh, does canola respond better to manured fields, uh, fields that got the granular or fields that got uh, anhydrous, or does well, it make a difference? I usually say a pound of nitrogen is a pound of nitrogen. So if that pound of nitrogen is released from manure or anhydrous ammonia or urea or any other form of nitrogen, as long as it's there, available for the plant to take up when it needs it, uh, the, the plant doesn't know where it's come from. Okay. And even if it's from uh, the breakdown of organic matter, that's just fine. As long as you have enough nitrogen air to meet the requirements of the crop during its uh, vegetative and reproductive growth stages. Okay, Ross, we've talked a little bit about nitrogen. Uh, what about what about phosphorus? Well, uh, in our work in across Alberta, we kind of identified when we had about 450 sites across Alberta when we were doing work with wheat, barley, and canola. We found about 80% of those sites responded to phosphate. And um, 
So when it comes to canola, we do know that the majority of our soils uh, will respond to some level uh, when we're phosphate fertilizers added. So I strongly recommend guys always soil test. Uh, what is your phosphate level? As long as your, if your soil test level is less than, as a general rule of thumb across across the prairies, if your soil test level for phosphorus is less than 60 pounds of P per acre in that top six inches, I'd be inclined to be putting on phosphate fertilizer. Now we know with canola we really shouldn't put on more than, in my mind, about 10 pounds of actual P per acre uh, seed placed, but some guys will go up to 15 and get away with it. We do have to be careful. So if you do need to put on more than that, if your yield potential is relatively good, then you'd want to be putting that uh, additional phosphate fertilizer in a side band or a mid-row band uh, somewhat uh, away from the seed so it won't cause a, a problem. But, but phosphate is important and guys should be looking at it, particularly if your soil test levels are less than 60 or 50. And if they're less than 20, you can. there's probably about a 95% a chance you're going to get a response. But once you get above 60, once you're up in that 80 or 90 range, the likelihood of response really diminishes. Okay. And what about sulfate? Uh, well, certainly we know that oil seed crops like canola uh, have a higher requirement for, uh, for sulfur. Uh, plants take their sulfur up uh, as sulfate, and so doing a soil test for sulfate, sulfur is important. However, we do know that sulfate will vary quite dramatically with landscape. So if you have land that's uh, undulating or moderately rolling, you have to be careful because you might find some areas of the field will test high, other areas may test low, but when you combine all your cell samples, the low areas are masked by the high areas and you don't actually think you have a sulfur deficiency. That's one reason why a lot of labs and agronomists will recommend sulfate uh, just as a, a maintenance application for insurance. But uh, we do, you do have to ask yourself, do you really need it? Are you in an area that, that is prone to sulfur deficiency? And we know that uh, our grey wooded soils across the prairies uh, Gray black transition soils and black soils, thin black soils, are more prone to sulfur deficiencies. But once you get into the brown and dark brown soils, it's unusual for our, those soils to uh, respond to sulfur. Occasionally they will, but usually they won't. And then if a farmer, for example, in southern Alberta is irrigating, or if any, any farmer really need taking his water from our, our river, uh, odds are uh, for every 12 inches of irrigation water you're putting on, you're putting on about uh, 30 pounds of sulfate sulfur, which is immediately available. So. Um, I'm often amazed at a number of uh, irrigation farmers that put on sulfate when their soil tests for sulfate are through the roof, but they, they put it on because somebody tells them to. So I always suggest look at your soil test, see what you've got, and, and ask yourself do you really need it. If that's something you can cut out of your program, but you don't need it, that's just going to be more money in your pocket. So it's always wise to really um, have a hard look at what's in your soil, ask yourself what do I really need. And, uh, Farmers should always be looking at for uh, not only an opinion from one person, but for from two or three different people, and get a range of opinions before they make their mind up on as to what they need for fertilizer.